What can you tell us about a possible new deal for Michael Antonio? Well, uh, you know the players they have deals, but uh, he's the player that that came last season to us, and he he improved a lot. He became basically from one of the players for the future, or um, let's 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 give him a chance. To the stage that he is one of the most important players for us on a long term. It's not like few games or whatever. It was last season since he, let's say, scored that goal against Southampton, which was seems ages ago. And then basically he didn't stop. And then he was very good for us last season. And then he continued to do the same this season. And uh, when the players are playing like that in a good age as well then they then a lot of clubs at least in the papers and all that they are attracting the the interest from from another clubs and that put them in a good position for a new deal and he definitely he deserved it so uh, it's a club decision of course to gather with mine but of course for me my kids got a Big time green light <laughs> to sign a new deal with us. Is it close? He's got a long deal. No, he's, uh, I think it just started. You know, I don't know all those details. You know about that. I always leave it to the chairman. Uh, but uh, I don't know if it. I hope it's close. I well, I hope it's done. To be fair, <laughs> say that way. But uh, I see no problem there because he definitely he's the one. You know. Uh, that uh, totally deserves it. With his behavior, with his uh, with his uh, work rate, with his quality, and at the end of the day, with his goals and assists that he's providing us, and the energy. We talked about his assists with, with um, everything that surrounded Andy Carroll's great goal um, last week. Was, was the contribution from Antonio Perhaps missed a little. Uh, yeah, you know, but I mean that game. I to, to the that game was. I tried to stop it, but but it was it was impossible. That game was overshadowed with the uh, with Payet situation, of course. But uh, okay, but let's say and and this goal was a one off goal, great goal, and right. But I said uh, or I tried to say. To say that uh, Mikey's performance, first of all, uh, he wasn't supposed to play to play that game because he had temperature serious one, like 38.4, which is definitely high enough to rule him out from the game one day before a game. We wanted him to play, of course. He wanted to play, and uh, first of all, to play like that. In these conditions, is thumb up, of course, and then to, to contribute in a way that he contributed in that game with three, I would say, brilliant assist is amazing. So he deserves a credit for that game, big time. Like, has Andy Carroll tried anything spectacular in training this week? Uh, no, 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 no. But he was very good in training. Uh, He's got a bit of a, got a, got a, how you call it, whiplash injury, like, like, <laughs> like, 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 like. That's what I've been told from the. It's not my words, but uh, that's what I've been told from the physios. Whiplash injury. So I went to dictionary basically to find out what is that. Uh, he's got a sore neck and all that. So uh, hopefully he's gonna be okay. How did he get the injury? <coughs> Whiplash. Yeah. How? <laughs> I know, I know, but I'm joking. Well, it was at the end of the game. I don't know. I don't know how. But he trained. But he trained on. Uh, he trained Tuesday. Very hard, good training. He was brilliant in training, to be fair. And then uh, he reported some neck pain, as I say. 
hopefully he's going to be okay. And we have a couple of them with uh, Knox. Mm -hmm. nah, we have Andy, we have uh, Winston Reed got a knock. It's knock, but it's, it's a painful one. Uh, Sam Byram got a knock on his knee. It was swollen, so he didn't train uh, even yesterday. He worked individually, but he's on a pitch today, so he should be okay. And also, Feguli missed training yesterday because of some minor problems with Achilles. So, but mm, I'm very optimistic, and I think that that's all of them. All of them gonna be fit for uh, for a game on Saturday. How important is it to, to build on what you did last? It's very game. important, of yeah, course. First win since Boxing Day. First time you scored in. Three matches, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three games without scoring. How important is it to build on that? Yeah, I mean, I said after the game that it was more than three points because because of the situation and because of uh, that that the front players or offensive midfielders they they either score a goal or they they had assist like Mike Antonio, and then we got a clean sheet. We were solid and all that. So it was it's 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 a great situation to build on. Uh, now we have a game on Saturday that we definitely want to keep this positivity around us. You could feel that mm, on on a training pitch like this week as well. So of course we we, we don't want to lose the momentum, and uh, we know we have a very difficult game on Saturday against a team that is very very solid, and they don't score a lot, but they don't concede a lot. Uh, they don't give away too many chances, but again. It's a good opportunity for us, and if we are, on, if we're going to be on the top of our game, then uh, I'm, I think we have a good chance. Do you need to prove that you turned it on? Uh, yeah, I mean, every weekend is another corner, you know. And it is a, a league like that, and uh, we are in a okay situation now, but we want to be in a really good situation and for that you need points and for points you need performances. For performances you need uh, confidence and, uh, and atmosphere and everything. So, Saturday. As far as Dimitri Pyatt is concerned, I mean, we've seen pictures of him playing with the under 23s and I, I, I know what you said last week about not wanting to sell him, but is his departure now inevitable? Isn't it? Well, I don't know, you know, I... I First of all, I wanted to, I always like, like all the managers, to solve the situations in a house, you know, but sometimes it's impossible, sometimes you have to draw the line and to, to protect, uh, not your job, but to protect the team, because the team is, there's nothing more important than a team and there's nothing ab uh, above the team. Instance. So, I said everything. Then, can I say now what's changed? Nothing changed. I'm sad that situation has happened. Uh, it's not good for anyone. <coughs> it's not good for him. It's not good for the club. It's not good. It's not good for football in general. I think, uh, but it's happened. It's not the first time. It's not the last time. Dimi took his stand very clearly at the club. Also, we took our stand very, very clearly, and uh, it stays the same. We ain't going to sell our best players just because, on, on a cheap, just because somebody wants to sign them or even they want to go home. And that's it. So I left it in the hands of chairman, and I'm sure that, that he's going to do the best thing. And that's basically all. Two bids are rejected. So far from, from Marseille. Um, in a way, would it be good to get it done and get it over with and, and move on? But you should ask, the, not you, but I mean, the ball is in their court. They are the ones that, that, that express interest, and uh, now they should act. Said the club want 30 million. Marseille. I ain't going to talk so about numbers, how are... If, if you met in the middle, would that do it? Look, all I'm saying is that we were very firm. 
what we've been saying about it. We know the market. We know how pff, good or great or whatever he is as a player. And uh, like everybody else, he's got his price as well. That's it. So about Jonathan Curry, <coughs> the suggestion that he wants to go back to Sao Paulo, is that the, the case? Well, it's not the case. It's not Well, it's, that is the situation with him because he... He didn't play a lot, he was also injured, he didn't have a good start uh, and all that, but I see him in training, he's, uh, he's one of the best trainers that we have in a squad, he always gives his 100% and uh, again, like, like with every player, you know, okay, he's not playing at the moment for us, uh, but we don't have too many strikers and uh, he's there, so... We have to see what he wants, but also what we need in the, in the be, be, because the things we do now until first of Je first first of February, it's like that till first of uh, till the end of the season. So okay, I always like to listen what the players want personally, but but uh, it is also very important what we want. The most important what the club. Not what, what the club needs. And with Caleri, it's like that at the moment. A couple of players that um, may be coming to West Ham. Jose Fong. Does he have a, a medical today? Uh, uh, not a medical, but uh, look, I said I said a few times already that uh, I, I'm going to talk about the names. We are, I'm sad about that, that we are the team that everything is open like. Uh, no, I like what. what uh, Wenger said once, I mean, we are not talking transfers, we are working on transfers, you know. For some reason, we are, we are always, uh, it's always in the papers, like, and although 95 of that is, it's not true, it's just the rumors, it's, it doesn't help us. Some of it, some of those stories are true, okay, and it definitely doesn't help. Yeah, but, uh, so I'm going to talk about the names that, that, uh, that we are trying to Yet. Because I said that we're going to try, we're going to try, not massively, because uh, in numbers, not like in numbers, big time, because I said that I have a strong belief and uh, our quality is there now in a dressing room already for trainings or for gym today. <laughs> but, and, uh, but one or two players I said that we need and we will, we're going to try to get. It's not easy, but we are trying. If we, if we get them, then you've got to know. Of the ones that you are trying, then, are you close to doing anything? Do uh, what does it mean? Close is very relative, you know. Close is very relative nowadays in football, you know. I've been, not in West Ham, but in a few clubs, and uh, many, many times something that looks very, very close uh, simply doesn't happen. And on the other side, something that looks very distant suddenly happens. So, uh, 24 hours. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. I want to ask you about something that Marco Van Basten, the technical director at FIFA, has been saying. Uh, he wants to make the game more dynamic and more interesting. And among the things that he is proposing is to abolish offside and introduce sin in football. What do you think about no longer having offsides in football? Well, I saw that last night, that's what you talk. It, it is very interesting, especially when it comes from uh, such a great, great centre forward. Uh, and he wants to not to have two half times past four quarters and uh, orange cards. Yeah, but those changes are same bin, so that they are, they, are, they, are, they are little ones. For me, the major one is offside. To be fair, I, I I don't know how football would look like because I can't even imagine that, you know. But my first reaction is like, uh, like impossible, you know. What would you have? You would live free. And everybody would love to have a rest on <laughs> by their goalkeeper on a post and just to tap in the ball. So I I really don't know how it would look. Maybe to try, but to see it on a pitch to organize a game and to see it, but uh, 
to me in last 10, 15, whatever years, for me the greatest, the greatest uh, change of the rules was that the goalkeeper can't, can't get the ball in his hands. When, when you pass it back to him. That was like a brilliant one. But I remember myself even then, even then we looked at it like, uh, why? Why they are changing that? Why? So, football is very conservative also, but some, some, some changes like that one that happened was to me great for, for the pace of the game and everything. Offside, if I have to say now yes or no, then it's clearly no. But I'm talking uh, blank. I, I don't know how it would look like. But for me, on the other hand, okay, it's always good to modernize. But on the other hand, football is not suffering from a lack of uh, popularity. On the contrary, it's even more and more popular. Yeah, and nothing can compare with football with the greatest respect to all the sports. Uh, it's still, and I think it's going to stay like that, it's going to be the most popular sport in the world. Thank you. Just thank, thanks. Sam, in the morning, I just wanted to, to go back to the comments you made about the Ken <coughs> What do you think is behind his rapid development? Is it just because he was already on that path, as it were, or is it a tactical thing? What, what do you think is behind his fantastic it's, uh, it's a character. You know, it's a character. And that's the main thing that's, that, that's been overshadowed in... When, when you or managers are judging the players or the fans, whoever, they go, yeah, he's got a great left foot, he's got a great right foot, he's so quick, this one lacks pace and all that, skills, vision, everything like, uh, but it's the character that basically makes the difference. And for me, uh, okay, I mean, it's not enough only to have a character, you have, have, a, you have to have a quality. But what makes a difference long term in your improvement and everything on a daily basis and games, it's, it's a character and his character is, is, is spot on. He was outstanding at the weekend. Sofian really played really well at the weekend as well. I wonder what your thoughts were on his performance and how he's coming. Thank you. I said, I said that about uh, Sofian. He didn't have a great start, uh, but that was mainly because he got injured when we played when we played against Juventus and that was like before Chelsea, before the first game of the season and then instead of being three or four days out, he was out for, I don't know, four, four weeks, five weeks and then when he came back mm, it was hard to put him straight in games. It gave him like a second half against West Brom when we were losing three or four nil and then uh, half an hour there, 15 minutes there, in a cup game he played and all that, but he couldn't get the rhythm and he was in training, okay, okay, but then in the last six weeks, he, I told him that he was, he improved a lot, he's making the difference in trainings and for me that's, that's the key, that's the key, you know the players nowadays they go like, I mean we don't have a I mean, the players who are not playing, and they come with their agents or whatever, and they say, well, I'm not playing. I say, we are not, we are not uh, in clash of interest. I want you to play. You want to play, so it's brilliant. But a lot of times, the, the starting position is different. Many of them go like, give me five games, and then I'm going to show you. I go like, yeah, okay, but show me a little bit in training. Show me in training. That's what the trainings are for, because we are not talking about the preseason. Not talking about the preseason that you can go, okay, we have five or six or four friendly games and all right. That's talking, if you're talking about the Premiership, there's also the pressure of, of, of uh, getting points. And uh, so Sofian deserves his chance big time because he was really good and is now better and better in sessions and then and then you think about him more, you put him, you give him a chance because he's a good trainer, he's fitter and everything, and he makes a difference on the pitch, then he gets more minutes, and then and then okay, and then it can end by becoming a very regular player for us. 
so simple. You spoke a little bit to me about the trip this weekend in Middlesbrough and how tough you expect it to be. I, I wonder if you could speak a little about the job that you think Karanka is doing at Middlesbrough and the size of the task he has to how oh, brilliant! I mean, for a Spanish guy, for for every foreigner, especially manager. I mean, the player they come, they are suddenly among ten foreign players. It's easier for them. It's almost like home, you know. But for a manager to come from from a foreign country, uh, for me it was easier because I played here. Yeah. Uh, for him to come, and especially in a championship that is very unique competition in the world to be fair they they play every day basically yeah to do that and to get a promotion in what two seasons I think yeah it's brilliant so mm, he got them in the Premier League then he was very brave to add some players he knew that although he got connected with the, that squad because it was very successful squad. But he knew I can't, I can't rely only on them. I need some more quality players I mean, to get Negredo, Valdez, and uh, and uh, a few others. It's it's uh, it's a, you need a character. You need uh, to be a decision maker, and uh, he's done it all. And they they are very hard to beat. They are very organized. And. Uh, so, chapeau to him. Yeah. And just an article for me, assessing where you are in the table right now, what would you say your targets are for the rest of the season? <sighs> to go game by game, to try to continue uh, to build on this situation. And uh, first of all, of course, to, to secure uh, staying up, to get to those magic word of 40 points or whatever and then to try to get to 50 if possible if we pass that then try to get I mean as as high as possible knowing it's going to be very very hard yeah. but now we are in a much better situation <coughs> than we were let's say I don't know a couple of months ago Which thanks <coughs> Again, very tough game. <laughs> very tough game. Uh, mm, I have respect for them. I, I just said what I think about them, and they have a organization. They have quality. They have a confidence. They play. They are playing with the confidence. But uh, do we have a chance? Yeah, of course we have a chance. And I expecting for my players to be exactly what what, what they were. Uh, many times this season, especially now, let's say, because it's very recent memory, uh, how we were in the second half of the game against Palace. To be on top of our game, to be on top in every sense, to, to be concentrated on the second balls, to be compact, to be brave on the ball, to be lethal, to deliver crosses, to break through them, to defend with numbers. Well, you got to do every every single bit of this this in every game because otherwise you don't have a chance and when we do that then we have a chance against any team and against Palace all the players really did join together do you think they still have that sense of being galvanized and going into the next one after everything that's happened in the yeah they have they have they have they have I mean it looks like it looks like that uh, it's normal when you win a game that the next week till the other game is is like all positive, but not not lazy, and all that. And uh, this week was like that, as I said. Hopefully, these players who I mentioned, who got a little knocks or a bit more serious knocks, they're gonna be okay. That's also in in this league. This is very crucial thing. And if if we stay away from that, then uh, we are gonna be lazy there. No, no, no. We know because we also against Palace, I mean, we had to work very hard to get those three points. No matter that the score sheet looks like free nil easy game, it, uh, it wasn't easy game. No. Thank you.